Hey folks, this is Emily with American Resiliency. I want to show you something cool. I know my eyes are kind of red today. There's a huge pink eye outbreak in my county and I'm still getting over the disease, but we've got a new tool and it's an original tool and I want to try and get it out there, you know? So you might have seen last week, I put out this video about um, our change in understanding around extreme heat projections. In that video, I shared important information that to figure out your total projected increased days over 95 at the county level, you need to look at information from three different sources and add the numbers up. But I'm so happy to tell you that thanks to a volunteer effort, we now have an at-a-glance tool. I want to show you Dustin's total heat map. This tool, I, I think it's fantastic. So this combines county level data from the NCA five figures for days over 95, days over 100, and days over 105. And you don't even need to click on this. Once you get it loaded up, if you scroll over it, you'll see the total days over 95 per county at a 1.5 C of warming over pre-industrial average and at two. You can see you don't need to click. It has a fluid scroll function. Let's talk for just a minute, though, about why we're choosing to highlight 1.5 C and 2 C. I want to look over at some information from the Copernicus Institute. So you might remember last summer, the summer of 23, across most of the U.S., we had a very long hot season. And as you can see here, for much of that really hot part of the summer of 23, we were kind of at right around 1.5 C. If you check back on Dustin's total heat map, I can tell you for sure that at 1.5 C, this was our additional days over 95 over the mean just about. We've had folks all over the U.S. do kind of a spot check, gut check with this map. A lot of folks are saying that, yep, their experience on the ground reflects that 1.5 C map pretty well in terms of increased hot season. Back to talking about 2 C, let's look back at this Copernicus figure here. And you can see we've spent some time over 2 C already. In late 23 and in uh, February of 24, we saw a couple of days where we peaked up over 2 C. You can see that this figure doesn't include the March data, but we do have it. If you're a person who likes to stay up to date on Earth system checks, I highly recommend the climate bulletins from the Copernicus Institute, where we're able to see that this uh, March, March of 24, came in on an average of 1.68 C. So that's still uncomfortably high global temperatures that are, according to a growing number of climate scientists, not really explainable by previous models, by our previous understanding of Earth's climate system. I think as we take that in, it's completely reasonable for a person who's looking forward to get pretty serious about what it would mean to experience a 2C summer in your area. I myself am quite startled and viscerally grossed out by the jump in the hot season between 1.5 C and 2 C at many locations. Let's check it out. So around my part of Iowa at 1.5 C, we'd have like another week of serious summer. At two, it'd be a little bit more than two weeks. And I think that you'll see for most locations, that's the sort of doubling we're looking at between a 1.5 C summer and a 2 C summer, which sucks. Down here in Texas, Webb County is the highest number I found just scrolling around on the map here with 92.2 additional days projected over 95. And I've heard that down in the south of Texas, you already have quite a few days over 95. So this is just pretty alarming. I think that it's important to look at how this uh, darker pink color in particular is spreading, where we expect people in many states at 2 C to experience conditions that really pass some serious thresholds in terms of their expectations around severe heat. And I know from my friends in Maricopa County that last summer seemed like it went on forever. Hot season increase we see here at 1.5 would be projected to be around 48 days. We see Maricopa County looking at projected nearly 80 days at 2C. So it's worth knowing what you're in for. I feel like this is the sort of change I'd rather have the heads up beforehand than later. Dustin, from all of us, from everybody involved in screening the tool and from everyone in the community, thank you so much for giving us access to this important at-a-glance resource. I think it's so usable and that it gives all of us here in the community important information that can inform our decisions about the future. Folks who are watching on mobile, this resource is not great on mobile. You're gonna to wanna to use a laptop or a desktop to have the best experience with this great new tool, the best original visualization to come out of our community here today.
Dustin and his family are one of the hundreds of American families using AR resources to figure out where they want to go as they think about leaving a part of the U.S. where these hot season extensions look pretty nasty. We know that this heat map, well valuable, isn't the only information we need to guide our decision making. AR's next original resource priority is generating a similar visualization to convey wet bulb risk. I don't have the skills to do it on my own, but that's why we have a community. That's why we work together. In an age where I feel like every week the news is more evidently generated by AI, with more weird grammar errors and puff, I think it's particularly important that we work together. People make mistakes, but we can help each other, keep each other accountable, and come together to generate new tools and solutions. Dustin, thanks again for contributing your original work to our community. To my knowledge, there's no better tool that exists to share at-a-glance heat risks. You really pushed the envelope here, Dustin, and anyone who's facing an increased hot season of more than two months, like we're looking at in Vegas and Phoenix, I feel like this is an important introduction to the challenges we could be facing much sooner than anyone would like. Now, if you'll forgive me, these lights are hurting my eyes still. All of you bottleneckers, I'm going to turn these lights down and we'll talk a few more minutes. So my community here in rural Iowa is getting a hit by a really intense outbreak of some virus that's causing pretty serious pink eye. I hear there are also really big pink eye outbreaks in Texas and Ohio, communities like mine that are close with dairy farms. Don't freak out or nothing. Everyone's getting better on their own. Adults are getting sicker than kids. Most adults need two to three days like completely off work because you can't see and you're gross. Me, my husband, and my friends who've had it also report feeling kind of freaked out during the acute phase of illness. I can tell you, I definitely felt freaked out because the illness hits you like a hammer in your eyes. And that's kind of scary. So this is just a heads up. I feel like this is some information maybe worth sharing just in case this weird pink eye starts moving into population centers. Because if it does, I feel like it's worth having this advice to stay calm, be prepared to be messed up for a couple days, you're gonna get better on your own. Things could get a little snarly. The amount of people we have out sick around here is making it hard to keep schools, factories, and businesses open. Anyway, like I say, don't freak out if it hits y'all. We're finding in my community this virus is completely self-limiting, we have had nothing serious happen with it. It's hit us fast. It's freaked us out. People are getting better on their own. Wishing you all the best, folks. Don't forget, if you have skills, you think you can help us out with that wet bulb project, get in touch. And let's keep doing our best to get ready together. These are difficult conditions we're heading into, and I'm glad not to be going it alone. Together, I think we can get the information we need to prepare as best we can. Take care, y'all. Folks, thanks so much for your support of American Resiliency. It's thanks to viewers like you who have contributed your energy, your money, your time, that we are where we are today, which is off the runway and looking towards year four and five. We're in the middle of a visioning process as we figure out what we want to do with the power that we've accumulated here with AR to figure out what climate information folks need, how to get it to them. If you want to be part of the visioning process, please get in touch. This is inclusive. We're seeking input from everyone in the community. And thanks again. Your involvement keeps this nonprofit going. If you want to give, you can find a donate tab at the top of our webpage or on the about page of our YouTube channel. Thanks so much and talk to you again soon.